So <clears throat> after you practice meditation long enough, when you're paying attention to the breath and you're paying attention to the body breathing, at some point, you'll start to notice awareness. This will take a while. In the beginning, when you first start to practice meditation, you're kind of putting up with it, right? Because your mind's racing and you keep trying to maintain attention on the breath, but you can't. Uh, so you have to go through that part of it. That's the hardest part of having a meditation practice it's, is in the beginning. It's like learning to play the piano, and the beginning is the hardest part. You have to do these drills over and over again and teach your fingers what the home keys are, you know, and you have to just keep doing that over and over again. And then eventually at some point, you can start to put together these sounds into something called music. And once you start to hear music, now the practice of playing the piano turns into something else. Now you start to listen for music and you start to be able to generate music. The same thing is true with meditation. If you stick with it long enough, eventually, especially if you uh, have the teachings to guide you and you have the teachings to have a deeper understanding of what it is that you're practicing. And if you stick with it long enough, you'll start to notice the awareness when you're not thinking. You're paying attention to the breath. The breath is a way of anchoring your attention. It's a way of giving you something to focus on so that you can maintain your attention in that one place. But after a while, after maintaining your attention in that one place, you start to notice that because there's no thinking, because you're not thinking, at least for a moment or two, that there is something here that is aware of the breath. And it's very subtle and it's formless, but you start to become aware of it. And when you start to become aware of it, the practice of meditation changes now. Now, when you're paying attention to the breath, you're aware of the breath, but now you're paying attention to awareness. That's how the practice changes. Now, once you recognize awareness and you're familiar with the fact that it's always available to you and that it is your true nature, and when you're paying attention to the body breathing, it starts to become evident that you're also paying attention to awareness. And not only are you paying attention to awareness, but you are that awareness that is aware of the body breathing. You are that awareness. And so now, because you are that awareness, but in your ordinary everyday life, you're not being that awareness, you're being the person you think you are. You're being the thinker of thoughts, you're being the personality, you're being the body. So now you start to realize that no, I, what I actually am is the awareness, because without this, none of that's gonna exist. This is, the, this is the foundation, this is the ground of being. This is my true nature. So when I start to recognize this, I'm becoming aware of me. I'm becoming aware of my true nature. I'm becoming aware of what I really am. And so when I practice meditation now, I'm relaxing the physical body. I'm moving attention away from the thinking activity. I'm focusing attention on the breath as a way of anchoring my attention. But then once my attention is anchored, I'm paying attention to the awareness that is no place. It's not a location, it's here. But where here? Well, it's a mystery, but it is here. It's, it's, it can be experienced to be here. And so now once it's recognized, as I practice meditation now, I'm giving my attention to this awareness. And now that I am aware of awareness, it's awareness being aware of itself actually, now, when, because I'm aware of awareness, I can begin to uh, use meditation to practice being aware of being aware, to practice being aware of being aware, to practice experiencing my true nature as awareness. And as I continue to do that now, because I recognize awareness, now when I'm looking at the awareness of the body breathing, uh, that awareness starts to become more real and more expansive. And the experience that I start to have during meditation is this experience of, of feeling spacious, this experience of feeling uh, relaxed and satisfied and at home somehow. Once you get to that place with meditation, you're well on your way. Now you know how to use this tool uh, to begin to recognize your true nature. And if you do this long enough over time, you'll start to notice that when you're not practicing meditation, you become aware of awareness.
When you're not practicing meditation and you're in the middle of living your life, you become aware of awareness and you become aware that this awareness is my true nature. I am aware of my life instead of being a body in my life. I'm aware of my thinking instead of being the thinker, the, the, the thinker, the, the one who's thinking. So everything starts to be different and, and the possibility starts to exist to experience a relaxed, at home, peaceful, happy state of being starts to become available, even in the activity of your life. And you start to realize that the more this identity is what you are, the more effective you are in living your life, the happier you are with your life, regardless of the circumstances, you can experience a kind of tranquility all the time about living your life. And life starts to show up for you as an exciting adventure instead of a problem. So this is the possibility. And in these talks, what I'm trying to do and what other teachers are trying to do, we're trying to point different ways to point at this awareness, to try and motivate you, to inspire you, to be interested and excited about this possibility so that you'll keep practicing meditation and you'll keep looking at the teachings and you'll start reading about this and you'll start looking in your everyday life to realize this possibility and to start to understand what this makes available to you as a human being. So one of the things that I came up with recently in terms of looking at, well, what, what, can I, what are the details here that I might be able to talk about that might help to help you to see, help you to see why, what's going on that you are not being the awareness? You know, what's going on that you're not being the awareness? Because uh, if you hear about this and you've listened to my talks or you've read my books or you've listened to other teachers, you want this, right? You want this possibility. You want this peace. You want this happiness. You want this satisfaction. You, you don't want to suffer, you know, you don't want to suffer. You don't want to be emotionally upset. You don't want to be in conflict with people. You don't want to be in conflict with life. You don't want to be afraid of death. You don't want to be afraid of life. So you want this. How could you not want this? This is everything that you've ever wanted, really. Everything that you've ever done in your life was to experience this. If you really stop and look at it closely, everything you've ever done in your life was to experience this. Everything you've ever wanted, you wanted because you thought it would allow you to experience happiness, right? So we have this thing as a personality where the way we're operating in the world of time and space is we're trying to be happy, we're pursuing happiness, right? So we want it, right? We want happiness, we want peace of mind, we want satisfaction, and therefore we want the things that we think if we get those things will give us that. That's why money is so popular, right? Because with money, you can buy all the things that you want that you think will make you happy, right? But at some point, if you're paying attention, at some point, if you're paying attention, you realize that something's going on here that's suspicious. Because every time I get what I want, then I have it, so I don't want it, right? And once I have it and I don't want it, it stops producing my happiness. You know, I mentioned this the other day, a new car, is something that people think will make them happy and they get the new car and it works for a brief period of time, right? They feel something, fulfillment. They, see, they feel some kind of fulfillment, you know? Oh, I got what I wanted now, I have it now. And it helps me to look good, it helps me to people to like me because I have a nice car. It, it gives me a position socially in the world to have a nice car, right? And on and on and on. And you know all the things that are connected to that, you know? Furniture, houses, you know, there's no end to what you could get in order to be happy. But you start to realize there's some, something suspicious going on here because as I live my life and I get older, I realize that I've been playing this get what I want game for a while now and everything I've ever gotten that I wanted never lasts. Even the relationships, you know, people get married because they think when they're in love, they get married because they think that, that when they're in love, this is gonna last forever. You, there's songs about it, right? The love that lasts forever, right? But it never does, it never does. It goes away, just like everything else that you got that you wanted, right? It goes away. So something suspect here, what is this wanting thing? Especially in relationship to what I'm talking about, because if you start to get a sense of the possibility of being what you are as the awareness, and you start to get a sense that this will really solve your problems. You'll, 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 you'll be happy and, and be able to experience tranquility regardless of the circumstances, you know? 
th this is a big uh, this is a big offering, right? This is a big possibility, right? Because it, it, it offers you something that will last. It offers you something that will last, right? But here's the deal. Here's the deal. The thing that makes this difficult, right, is wanting it doesn't work. You can't want this and succeed. You can want other things. You can want anything else and succeed, right? You want it. You think about it. You desire it. You take action to get it. You do what it takes to get it and then you get it, and then you have it for a while, and that's not it, and then you look around and see what else do I want, and you chase that. That's your life. That's your life, right? Everything. That's why people are looking forward, looking forward. What are you looking forward at? I'm looking forward to what I want. Something's going to happen in the future that I like. So, so right now, I can put up with right now because of that, because I'm looking forward to that, right? So this wanting thing is very suspicious, and so I looked up the word want. I had never looked up the definition of the word want. What does want mean? What does it mean? It's interesting. Sometimes when you look up a definition of something, it really allows you to recognize something about it, right? The definition of want. Have a desire to possess or do something. Have a desire to possess or do something. So you want this enlightenment. You want this self-realization because of what it makes available to you. You want that. So it's a desire to possess this enlightenment or to do something, right? So now you want this enlightenment. So the first thing you want to know is tell me what to do, right? Tell me what to do. I want it. I don't have it. I want it and I don't have it, right? So I desire it. I want to possess it. I want it to be mine. So I'm going to do something. That's the way I get everything else, right? So that's the first definition of want, the verb, right? Then the noun definition is even better. The noun definition of the word want is a lack or deficiency of something. That's what the word want means, that you lack or you're deficient of something. That's why you want it. And I said a little couple of minutes ago that this is the one thing that wanting doesn't work for. You can't want this and get it. You can't want this and do anything to have it. So you're stuck, right? Because that's the only game you know how to play, right? The only game you know how to play is to want something, think about it, do something to get it and get it. And so that's what you're going to do with this because that's all you know how to do, right? And then you get frustrated because it's not working, right? You've probably tried. You know, you've probably tried, those, especially those of you who have been coming to class uh, and, and kind of got the taste of the possibility, right? Then you really want this, and you're trying to get it, and you're doing everything you know to get it. You're thinking more about it, right? You're reading more books about it. You're going to retreats about it. You're practicing more meditation. Maybe if I do more different and better, maybe if I do more meditation, you know, so it's all doing, right? It's all doing. And it's not working, so you, you get frustrated, you know? What's going on here? Why can't I get this? I think I understand it. I understand the concepts, right? But it just doesn't seem like I'm getting anywhere here. It just doesn't seem like I can, get, I can get it. And the reason that that's the case is because you cannot get this by wanting it or doing anything to get it. Why? Why do you think that is? You cannot get this by wanting it or doing anything to get it. Wanting, now watch. Wanting to be what you already are is impossible to do. Wanting to be what you already are is impossible to do. You can't get it. Wanting it won't help because wanting it means that you're coming from a, a place of being deficient, right? Wanting it means you're coming from a place of not having it. That's the trick. You do have it. And since you do have it, to want it and try to get it won't work. It'll never work, right? So what will work? What will work? Wanting to experience what you already are, wanting to experience the awareness or the consciousness that you already are, is like wanting sugar to be sweet. See if you could get that. It's like wanting sugar to be sweet. Why would you want sugar to be sweet, right? Isn't sugar already sweet? Yeah, it's the same thing. Wanting to be what you already are is like wanting sugar to be sweet. Wanting to be what you are, already are, all, the wanting it itself is in the way. <coughs> the wanting it itself is in the way. So I'm giving you a hint. If you want to experience this possibility, if you want to experience who you really are and, st and start to experience 
the, the, the satisfaction and the peace of mind and the happiness of everything, stop wanting it. Now, when I say that, your mind starts getting confused, like, well, how do I do this? How, what do you mean, stop wanting it? How am I going to get it if I don't want it? How am I going to get it if I don't do anything to get it? You know? Your brain doesn't know how to process that, that, that type of operation. Doesn't know how to process that. So the only way you can get it is not to want it. The only way you can not to want it is to realize you already have it. And the only way that you can realize you already have it is to just pay attention to it. That's all. Just pay attention to it. That's a lot harder than you would think, right? Just don't forget, you just tried to practice meditation and how successful were you paying attention to the body breathing? If you can't even pay attention to your breath, how are you gonna pay attention to something that has no form, right? Well, it is possible, it is possible. How do you pay attention to it? You pay attention to what it is not. And when you're paying attention to what it is not, you're paying attention to it. Let me repeat that. You're not, you're, you're, you're being what you're not all the time. You're being a physical body and you're being a personality. Now you may have to go back and do some work with those ideas I just mentioned to get clear about it because I know that a lot of people would want to argue about that and say, oh, I am a physical body and I am a personality and all that, right? Well, I'm not going to take the time here to debate that with you. There's plenty of material that you can study and read that'll make it clear to you that that's simply not the case. And once you're clear that's simply not the case, then you realize that you've been busy being something that doesn't exist. You've been being busy being something that you're not. So how do you realize what you are, right? You pay attention to yourself being something that you're not. In order to see what you're being that you're not, you must be seeing it from what you are. You get it? That's how you wake up. That's how you begin to come out of the dream. That's how you begin to to recognize the, your true nature and start to experience yourself as that true nature. It's a practice, it's a practice. Just like meditation, it's a practice. You've been practicing being something that you're not all of your life. And your brain believes that you are that. Your brain doesn't have any uh, consciousness, it just accepts the data that you put into it, just like a computer program, garbage in, garbage out, right? And so your brain has it, the data in your brain has it that you are a physical body and you are a personality and therefore it thinks thoughts that are consistent with that, doesn't it? It thinks thoughts that are consistent with that. It thinks the thoughts that tell you uh, what you need to do to get what you want. You know, it thinks thoughts like that all the time. Or it thinks thoughts, thinks thoughts to tell you how to avoid what you're afraid of, doesn't it? It worries right? It worries. It's called the default state of the mind. That's where a lot of the psychological and emotional suffering comes from. When you're thinking as something that you're not about a world that's not the real world. That's the craziness that's called uh, neur neurosis. I'm a psychologist. I can talk about this. That's the craziness that's called neurosis. That's the craziness that breeds anxiety. That's the craziness that, that breeds depression. Right? It's the craziness that breeds sleeplessness. It's the craziness that, uh, that breeds physical tension. It's the craziness that has you behave poorly. Because when you believe you're something that you're not, that which you're not feels threatened, what does it do? It wants to fight or run, doesn't it? Now, that's your brain operating with the idea that you are a physical body and you are a personality. The truth is that that's not the case. And when you begin to realize that truth, guess what? You stop chasing things and you stop running from things. You just start being present. You just start being available to experience life. And it starts becoming evident to you that you don't need, you know, once you experience the truth about yourself, you don't want anything because you have everything. What is the everything that you have? The everything that you have is the experience that you've been after by getting all the things you thought you needed to be happy, isn't it? If you're experiencing what you were doing, all the things to get the things you thought you needed to be happy, if you're experiencing that already, right, then what happens to chasing things to be happy? What happens to it? I'll tell you what happens to it. It doesn't, it doesn't mean the same thing it used to mean, right? It now becomes an interesting activity that you do in life, right? but you're not dependent on it for the experience that you're trying to have. You already have that experience. So you're not trying to get, you're try, not trying to get happy by getting the right relationship. You're already happy 
and then you have the relationship. You know, and I can tell you the difference that makes after being divorced four times. <laughs> Finally, I can be with the person I'm with and not keep comparing them to who they should be, right? That's the way the mind works. That's the way we play the game, you know? When we get what we want in a relationship, right? We're blind when we get what we want in a relationship if we fall in love because love is a virus. You know, we're blind when we fall in love. We see this person as being everything I ever wanted. I'll never need, we'll never want anything else. We'll be happy ever, have happy ever after, happy ever after. And even though the evidence is pretty obvious that that doesn't work, I mean, if you're really going to be brutally honest about it, you know, the statistics, the actual statistics are over 50% of the people that get married get divorced, and the other 49% that don't get divorced are coping. <laughs> They're coping. So they are divorced, they just didn't do it legally, right? And then they talk about that in terms of saying, oh, well, you know, you know, it's part of life, that's the way life is, you know, you just, you, st you have to stop expecting things to be the way you really want them, and you just, you know, have to join a club somewhere to have an activity to keep your mind busy so you don't have to think about death. Isn't that the way it goes? Right? So what we're talking about here is you can actually be satisfied with what you have all the time, no matter what it is. Because the thing that you have that's beyond the value of anything you could possibly get is the experience of who you are as awareness itself. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. Not only do we ignore it, right? Not only do we ignore it all the time, but we don't appreciate what it is. If you start to pay attention to it and you start to realize, wait a minute, there's a miracle happening in my brain. A miracle is happening in my brain. My brain is creating the universe. You know, the, the neuroscientists are telling us this now, right? that this data is coming in through your eyes and the ears and the touching and all that's coming into the brain and the brain's turning that information into the universe that you see. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. And you are the awareness, right? You are the awareness that's aware of that universe that's being created. And so if you're aware of the universe that's being created, right? And, and, and you are the awareness that you are and what you're aware of end up, end, end up becoming evident to you to be the same thing. The universe that you're aware of and the awareness that is aware of the universe end up being the same thing. Don't worry if you don't get that. That's called non-duality, right? That's a, that's a more, that's further down the road as far as the truth is concerned. But that possibility is a real possibility. You can experience non-duality, right? So this is, this, this is what's possible through this meditation. You know, you, 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 it's very important for you to learn about this possibility, for you to contemplate this possibility, for you to think about this possibility, and for you to look to see what this possibility actually is experientially. Now, one of the things about it, if you really want to wake up and, you know, be the awareness that you are, right, is you have to go from concepts to non-concepts, right? Everything I'm saying is conceptual, right? It's language, right? But is what I'm talking about what I'm talking about? Is what I'm talking about what I'm talking about? They're just words, right? The actual experience of the awareness that you and I are is non-conceptual. This is one of the reasons that it's hard to recognize it and experience it, right? Because we try and recognize it through thinking about it, turning it into concepts, turning it into words. That's what I'm doing right now, turning it into concepts and turning it into words. But it's not that. It's not that. And yet it's here, right now. It's, it's something that not only are you experiencing it, it's experiencing you. Not only are you experiencing it, it's experiencing you. It's aware of the body. It's aware of the personality. So it's experiencing the you that you think you are. It's experiencing the body that you believe you are. And it's experiencing that you and that body interacting with the world. It's experiencing that, right? So when you become the experience of that, all the suffering that occurs when you think you are the body and when you think you are the personality stops happening. Because now you're in the movie theater watching your life happen instead of being in the drama. So this is what's available. It's, 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 it's very difficult to talk about. 
That's one of the reasons I talk about it, because I think the challenge is interesting, you know? How, what can I say about this that will point at it accurately enough that the person might be able to take from what my finger's pointing at to what it's pointing to and actually experience that? Because what I'm pointing at is that you are experiencing that right now. In fact, not only are you, are you experiencing that, but you are that which you're experiencing. You are that which you're experiencing. So you can't see it. You can't touch it. It has no form. It doesn't exist in time. And yet it is what you are. And the only way you can know it, the only way you can know it is the way you do know it. And you're not going to know it by wanting it or doing anything to get it. The only way you can know it is to experience that you are being it. That's how you know it. And, pay, pay, and then paying attention to what you're not from there. Paying attention to what you're not from there. And practicing paying attention to what you're not from there. That's called self-inquiry, you know, by some famous teachers that came up with that self-inquiry. Practicing paying attention to what you're not. So when you're paying attention to what you're not, you won't identify yourself as that. You'll identify yourself as that which is seeing what you're not. And to keep doing that over and over again, gradually, it starts to take hold, right? It starts to take hold. If you do it over and over again, gradually, it starts, to, it starts to get clear enough, it starts to get consistent enough that you don't even have to practice it. You just start being yourself. And when you're paying attention to what you want, the, the, the act of doing that is, now, now watch, when you're paying attention to what you want, the act of doing that is occurring because you don't think you have it. Oh, right. Remember, the definition of the word want means that you're deficient, you're lacking this. You're lacking this. So when you're paying attention to what you want, the act of doing that is verifying that you're not there. But it's already happened. And the, and the awareness that you are doesn't have to practice anything. It's available. Not only is it available, but it, have, it has wisdom and it has, infinite inf it has infinite information available. That's how Einstein discovered the theory of relativity. If anybody that studies Einstein, he said, I, I, when I discovered the theory of relativity, I was simply being receptive. I was simply sitting and being receptive. And it downloaded. It just came to me. I just saw it, right? Why? Because without thinking about it, Right? The thinking process is, is limited. The thinking process can only use the data that you have stored in your brain from the time you were born. Well, that's a, that equals nothing. That's nothing compared to the possibility of all information. Right? But if you stop thinking and you're just receptive and you're aware and you have the intention of seeing, now you have access to infinite information. So just by sitting there with the intention of realizing something, that information can appear in front of you can appear in front of you. You know, you, you have to have an, see, the thing is this, you have to have an intention, now watch, you have to have an intention to realize what you are, right? You have to have an intention for that, right? But as the intention manifests itself in the process of the realization, right? As it manifests itself in the process of realization, you realize that it's unnecessary to intend to be what you already are. You see all, the, see all the ways that it keeps moving away from it? You know, no matter what you do, no matter what you say, you're moving away from it. This is the way the personality functions. The personality wants to move toward itself. It wants to figure out how to move toward itself. What do I have to do? What do I have to practice, right? The practice of meditation is just to strengthen your ability to pay attention. It's not, you're not going anywhere. It's just to strengthen your ability to pay attention so you can hold that attention, right? on something other than thinking long enough for you to notice and wake up. Yeah, because you can't, you can't take a step towards you. You can't even imagine taking a step towards yourself. That won't work. But you see, you, you, can, can you see how the, given your conditioning and given the way your brain works, right, that, that that's the way you want to approach this anyway. You, you, you want to get this. You want, you can, it's like you can't help it. You can't help wanting to get this. Why? Because I experienced that I don't have it. Right? right? Because I experienced that I don't have it, you know? But that's not true. You think that, and you believe that thought, and then you're stuck. That's all it is, it's a thought. Yeah, it's like if you, if you, if you keep, 
if you keep walking out in the rain, you're going to end up getting wet. It's the same thing, right? Because you're, you, you know, if you keep exposing yourself, you keep exposing yourself to what's already true, you, it might land for you that it's already true. If you keep exposing yourself to, the, to it's already true. It might land for you that's already true. And if it lands for you that's already true, you'll stop wanting it. You'll stop trying to get it. You'll realize you already have it. Now the practice is noticing that. That's all. The practice is just noticing that. That's why practice is so important, you know, because, you, you, you know, it's one thing to recognize who you are. It's one thing to have a clear sense of that so that your practice is useful, right? But then you have to practice in order to have it take you over. Right? You have to practice in order to get uh, totally out of the way. It takes time to get totally out of the way. The human being, the person that we are, doesn't want to give up wanting because you feel if I give up wanting, well, I'll be lost. I have to have wanting and I have to have doing. That's how I've gotten everything I have. Don't tell me to give that up. I can't give that up. Well, you don't have to give that up in the game you're playing. All you have to do is give that up in this one situation you know, realizing your true nature. Because in this one situation, it won't work. And in this one situation, if you do realize what you are, this is the happiness that will last. This is the one happiness that won't go away. Because it's always there, and it's always the same strength. Always totally happy. And what is this total happiness? It's, it's important to understand this, this happiness is, like, is different from the happiness that people think is what happiness is when you get what you want. Uh, this happiness is different because you're not getting anything, right? You're being aware that you don't need anything. You're not getting anything. It's the absence of the suffering that you go through by not getting what you want anymore. The absence of that suffering. So if you're not suffering, just imagine if there was no suffering. What I mean by that, there was no, no problems. You had no problems. You didn't want anything. You don't need anything. You're not going anywhere like that. Just imagine the best you can if that was the case. If that was the case, you'd be left happy. See what I'm saying? You'd be left happy. You didn't get happy. You'd be left happy because that's the way it is naturally when the suffering stops. 